Welcome to our boat tour video. Come aboard our 35 foot catamaran, Blue Moon 2. Hey guys, so Blue Moon 2 is a 35 foot island packet catamaran. She was built in 96 in Florida, United States. She crossed the Pacific or at least came through the canal, Panama Canal in 2008. We really love our boat. There's a lot of uh, positives and there's also a few negatives. Um, there's a lot of compromises with most boats, so there always is. A few of the compromises for me and uh, Lauren would be that she's not the fastest thing on the seven seas but she is very sturdy and there's a lot of room on this boat surprisingly on the foredeck and everywhere else we'll show you that in this boat tour so let's start the tour of the cockpit so at the helm here these are the controls for the engines um, one on this side one on the other side here on the port side we have twin Yanma engines 27 horsepower engines uh, one engine has been rebuilt and before we bought the boat and the other one is original so that one engine has a lot more hours on it than the other so we do like to run run the uh, rebuilt one a lot more than the other side we have our wind instrument our depth and speed through the water we have a paddle wheel underneath uh, the hull and the course master autopilot we also use our ipad for navigation and the old lawrence hds7 with our iPad, we use we actually use our iPad um, more than our normal chart plotter on, on the boat because it's so portable and we can take it off, take it wherever we want on the boat, up at the bow there, down below. Also a nice feature is when you're on watch, you're sick of sitting at the helm there on the chair, you can swivel this guy around and poke it whichever way you want. You can be sitting over there, there, um, anywhere. A really good feature. There's a lot of space in here. That's one of the benefits of owning a catamaran is there is enough room to swing a cat in this area. I know monos, a lot of monos that have really small cockpits and most of their living areas down down below. So we spend a lot of time up in the cockpit and there's a lot of airflow up here as well. And in, in Indonesia and Darwin and the places we've been, it is vital because it is so hot here. I'm even sweating now. We installed this table. We can remove the actual table and take it down below in the saloon. So it is a very handy thing to have out here because we can do everything out here and then just put it out of the way or take it completely off if we need to. Bait board and our stainless barbie. I love it. Grab the old tongs, test them out, throw the steak on, good. Another good feature is when it's raining on board, we have a lot of protection from the elements. A lot of boats, a lot of small monos, they don't have very good protection. Like you see these tiny little biminis and they're just getting smashed by the sun and the wind and the waves and the rain. We have a lot of storage under each side for all sorts of random stuff like jerry cans, flippers, um, snorkels. And then in the sides here, we've got heaps of storage, knives, uh, stubby holders, stubby coolers. So there's plenty of storage on this boat, but you don't want to overload it because it is a catamaran. And then I keep all the dirty sort of stuff, like the two-stroke oil and, and yeah, all the dirty stuff in these ones. But there is a lot of room in here because it goes into the engine room. Good place to store the jerry cans. They're just out of the way, really, in there. We have these, this davit system for our, for our dinghy. We usually pull the dinghy up with the outboard off just because it's a lot heavier with the eight horsepower outboard on there. To do that, we either use, use the halyard or we will use this crane that we have on the side here. These are our solar panels. They're about 55 watts each, and there's four of them. I wouldn't mind getting some more, maybe some flexible panels. Uh, I'm not sure what they're like, but they'd be very handy to just throw out on the fore deck because there's a lot of room up there and just charge the batteries when we need to. We also have a shower on the back here, it's pretty cool. We've got solid handrails here, which is a really good safety feature. If you were to 
be going running from one side of the boat to the other and almost fall overboard, you'd be caught by these bad boys. We do have a wash down fitting so that we can wash the boat from our tanks. So we got a lot of space up here. We don't have the nets like all other cats. Our boat has a solid bridge deck and it has a delta pod. Island Packet calls it a delta pod which splits the waves in, in two and then the hull absorbs those waves. So that leaves us with an awesome storage area and a really solid boat. So we've got awesome storage here in this delta pod area. A lot of the time I'll store the sails. Our life raft is in there, it shouldn't be. I do know that if you life raft inflates in an enclosed space, it can completely rip your boat in half. So yeah, there is a lot of room in here. Just give you an example. You won't see me in a second. Bye. Where's Dylan? Hey, I'm back with the anchoring on our boat. We've got a CQR type M anchor and then a fortress plow type anchor, which Stores is just there. Yeah. We also have a lot of rope. I just bought a massive drum. I think it was like 100 meters of rope. We don't have that much hooked onto the chain, but we've got about 75 meters of 10 mil 3B chain. That is an awesome amount in Indonesia because the anchorages are very deep here. To lift all that up, all that chain we use a Maxwell Maxwell RC10 windlass we got some speakers there um, I'm, I'm actually really surprised that they've lasted so long because it's just exposed wires at the back there we've got our sail off at the moment because there's a small tear in the Genoa and while we had that off I was doing some maintenance on the furling unit here just greasing it up we keep all our dock line fenders and stuff in here emergency winch handle. This is our remote for our windlass. Just plug straight in under there. Also have a toggle switch at the helm. Pop that bad boy up. And just watch the sun go down, I suppose. All of our lines run back to the cockpit. Uh, we do have a winch here just for the spinnaker halyard and for the Jenny, the Genoa. Luma winches, this one's a 30, this one's a 48. Uh, this is our furling winch and then this is for our sheet, jib sheet. So Blue Moon 2 is a fractional rigged sloop. Our sail inventory consists of a Genoa, a mainsail, an asymmetrical spinnaker, and a storm sail. We also have a uh, drogue. And that's about it for our inventory for sales. So that's the cockpit and the foredeck sorted. Let's head down below. Loz, the meatloaf! Welcome to the galley. So we have a good sized galley, heaps of bench space, but we have a tiny sink, unfortunately. Uh, it's serviced by a two burner gas stove, as well as an oven. We have plenty of storage in the galley cupboards all across the top where we keep all sorts of knickknacks. More knickknacks in here and pots and pans below. So quite a lot of space. A potato drawer. All of our potatoes are sprouting. And we also have a fridge that we converted into a pantry. Heaps of space in here. Plates and cups, etc. here, and our knife rack along here. This is a magnetic knife rack that we installed before we left. And it's really good. Bagus. Uh, tea and coffee we keep up here just for easy access. I have a nice uh, indoor pot plant because everybody likes plants and you want a bit of extra oxygen. And we also have all of our cutlery in these drawers along the front. More storage underneath the zinc for 
all the cleaning products, which is, you know, mainly vinegar. And another cool feature of this kitchen, which I really like, in addition to all the space, is this service window. So this is a window that you can use when you're underway. So if there's bad weather, you can pass food out this hatch and it has like this little buffer bumper here. This is our companionway stairs and we have storage underneath those. This is our battery isolator switch as well as our automatic bilge. So in here we have our 1500 watt 12 volt inverter. So this means we can run kitchen appliances such as a coffee grinder and a blender and we can also run a printer off that as well. Occasionally charging laptop and iPad. The first aid kit in here and a few extra bits and bobs. The job board and just general court board where we've got some photos and calendar, some reminders of home. This is where we keep all of our emergency equipment, flares, UHF, air horns, and also our AISs in here. We also keep our radio procedures stuck to the inside with the phonetic alphabet for anybody that comes aboard and isn't familiar with it, as well as the distress call mayday procedure. Above that we have our radio, so it's all in the same spot. And we actually keep our EPIRB right above the kitchen here. It's just a nice, easy spot, as well as the fire blanket right by the stove. These two features here are easily accessible from the cockpit in case of emergency. This is our control panel. This is how we run all of our lights, turn our fridge on, turn our anchor light on. We also have the autopilot switch and the DC outlet switch so we can charge all of our electronics off DC. Normal radio just to listen to tunes, so we've got the aux cord or we can Bluetooth to that. And we have speakers that run throughout the boat as well as up in the front, which Dylan showed you. HF radio for emergency situations at sea. This is just a junk drawer where we keep lots of stuff that we need to access quickly, such as. And this is also the boat's chart table, so it's a stand-up chart table. Again, it's close to the cockpit for ease of navigation, but all of our navigation equipment is electronic. We do have charts, yeah. We do have paper charts, but uh, hopefully we never have to use them. As well as having lots of room in our cockpit, we also have lots of room in our saloon and a stripper pole. So this is our saloon. You have a look here, we've got this huge windscreen here which lets in so much light. It's one of the things that we were looking for when we bought a boat was natural lighting. I think that's very important. So we had these saloon couches built for us and put in. We had these built and the fridge slides out, fridge freezer, storage, More storage, storage. And spare parts, tools. Power tools, vacuum, just all sorts. This is usually where all the wine is, but we've just downed all the wine and the rum. So we, we put the flooring in. The table actually slots in there. Have the table here on either side and you can access the table. Lauren's built this little uh, fruit hammock for her pumpkins. So this Island Packet Cat was remodeled sometime before it left the United States. So when you're looking online at Island Packet Cats, they look different because each hull used to be enclosed. So starboard side hull is captain's quarters. So this is mine and Dylan's cabin. So we have some storage here, more storage and aircon that we don't use. And in here we have the cupboard. So storage, cupboard. We have a hatch in our bedroom so we can watch the stars, watch the sunrise and get a nice breeze through as well as two port lights and then cupboards where we shove all of our clothes in. Sheets and towels, sewing machine. This is the starboard side bathroom. We have the head and then we use the shower space for storage. Um, so we just have our dirty clothes basket and all of the fishing gear. And this is also access into the engine room. Nice access in there for Dylan. Storage in the cupboard there as well. And going to the toilet on a boat means that you get a really good arm workout. Once you do your business in the toilet, so you just get really buff every time you go to the toilet on a boat because you have to pump and pump and pump and pump. Lock. And now the port side hull. 
So same story, we've got storage all in here, storage all in here, and a little bit of bench space. It is a mirror image on either side. So this is exactly the same as the other side. It's another head, um, except this shower is the shower that we use, which is spacious enough for a sailboat, I think. So a few other things we haven't mentioned yet. The water tanks are underneath each bed. Uh, each tank is 200 litres. This is just the guest cabin. Hello, welcome to the engine room. Um, this is our Yanmar 3GM30F. The mess in here at the moment. We are going to redo all the wiring and all the plumbing and everything when we pull out next, I suppose, because it is a mess. Here is our water maker. Um, he's what makes all our water. I mean the electric motor with the pump side of it. Um, this is the membrane over here. And then we've got two filters and then the control panel here. Um, we, also, we also keep our battery bank here. There is 300 amp hours of deep cycle power here. This is the lead acid batteries. Um, so next time when we replace our batteries, I think we'll either go to AGM or lithium ion phosphate. We also have a hot water system, so that runs off the engine. Yeah, you have a nice hot shower. And this is the autopilot. This is the yeah autopilot we have on here that runs back to the steering system. So the good thing about this setup with the the hatch here or the little doorway is I can get fresh air in here when I'm working on the engines. You can also ventilate air when the engines overheat or when we're running the water maker. And then as well as that, it's good light source for when I'm working down here. I don't have to have a big flashlight because I can just open this up and I've got plenty of light down here. So it's good. And I can even climb out here in an emergency situation. So I'll take you over to the other side. And we're in this side. So we're on the starboard side now. Uh, pretty much identical to the port side. The only difference is uh, we have a generator, three kilowatt, uh, three kVA generator. The controls to the generator. There used to be a fridge compressor up here, but we keep all our uh, engine oil, coolant, and engine oil filters, uh, fuel filters, everything up here. So this is all the dirty sort of stuff. And then, as well as that, I have pretty much the whole port side hull as my workshop. So that's the end of our boat tour guys, um, I hope you liked the boat tour, uh, we showed, showed you a bit of our where we live and, and our home, so thanks for watching. Join us next week as we play first aid with Lauren's injured finger, we finally get our hands on our passports and we cook up our first octopus. These videos are funded by viewers like you. Want to know more about us? Gain exclusive early access to weekly episodes, score some Blue Moon merch, win the chance to come aboard and support our production? Then check us out on Patreon. And if you're ever wondering where we might be in real time, you can keep up to date on Facebook and Instagram. In addition to the subscribe button, click the bell to the right and you'll be notified of each new weekly episode. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching Blue Moonies. Moonies. What's going on? What up? <laughs> So, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh.